You've seen the big plays. Jaron stepping to his right, looking, looking, stopping, firing, end zone, touchdown! You've heard what the playmakers and coaches have had to say. Up for a three, got it! But now it's time to go behind the mic with BYU Sports Broadcasters to get their distinctive take on the games. Oh, what an aggressive play! This is Behind the Mic with host Cleon Wall. We're here to bring you unique insights and stories from the BYU Sports Broadcasters who cover the Cougars and from the Cougars themselves. My guest for this episode is Lauren McClain. Lauren and I have worked together for the past year on the BYU radio show Cougar Tailgate, and she's also the host of Her Why, which we'll talk about more at the end of this episode. She's the only non-analyst for BYU Broadcasting who has played collegiate sports. I haven't had her on as a guest, so I thought it was a good time to get to know the real Lauren McLean. And just like a few weeks ago on Behind the Mic, I started by asking her how she fell in love with sports. I just grew up playing sports my entire life. You know what's funny is I'm the youngest of seven kids. There are six girls and one boy. And my dad is, is a really great athlete. My mom is as well. Um, my dad played um, baseball, football, played a little baseball in college. And so he was, of course, you know, hoping for seven boys. But he got six girls and one boy, and the boy was the fifth. But for some reason, we all ended up loving sports. And it's probably because he, he ingrained that into us at a really young age. He, I mean, he watched NFL games. He watched baseball games. And he would just, you know tow us along and he he is now 70 almost 74 he still plays softball uh in basketball like in the senior games and in tournaments so pickleball and golf he, he just doesn't stop so i would say my dad is the one who who really ingrained the love of sports in the, me at a young age the way you talk about it it's like you almost had no choice at all <laughs> it was like <laughs> no you, you no, are going we to love sports because well, I love yeah. sports. I, I, I'm being facetious when I say that, but it just feels <laughs> like it's like, well, I guess I better love sports because dad likes it. Yeah, well, I, I, I loved my dad. I looked up to my dad and I just came out of the womb extremely competitive. So I think I was just, I was destined to play and to love sports. And so, yeah, I grew up playing all different types. We, you know, we had a basketball hoop. My dad would throw football passes to us at a young age. All seven of us would line up and we do routes. And, and that's just how my upbringing was. And we loved it. You talked about your dad playing college baseball, playing all these different sports. What sports did you gravitate to as you were growing up? Because I know you played multiple sports yourself. Yes, I uh, I loved basketball. I always loved basketball growing up. Um, I really liked softball a lot. And then I ended up also playing tennis and track, doing track in high school. So I did those four sports in high school. But I would say basketball was my favorite, my absolute favorite. And in fact, um, I don't know if you want me telling this story yet, but at, when I was 12 years old, um, my parents entered me in this this shooting competition me and one of my friends it was called it's nba two ball so it was sponsored by nba and mcdonald's and they did it just locally at your at your um in your town so in pleasant grove i did a shooting competition and the two of us won you have a minute to see how many shots you can make i just hung out at the three-point line and my friend hung out at the free throw line <laughs> so the three-point line was worth i think like eight points and so i just hung out there and shot and we so we won locally and then there was a regional tournament and we won that and so uh we had one of the highest scores in the state so they had us compete uh, at halftime of a jazz game and so I was 12 years old at the time and um so we went and shot against these girls and it was so much fun because I remember the whole crowd on my side was just going crazy every time we'd make a shot and so we won that and so we, we thought that's where it ended and then I, I was in sixth grade so I was in elementary school and I remember being in class sitting in class and all of a sudden my mom walks in with balloons and stuff. And then they made an announcement um, over the intercom that my partner and I had the highest score nationally so that we, we were qualified for nationals and they flew us out to Indianapolis to an Indiana Pacers and, and Cleveland Cavaliers playoff game. And we got to shoot at halftime against these girls from Detroit. I remember they played the Rocky soundtrack track as we walked out <laughs> dun, 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 dun. and I was like, this is the greatest moment of my entire life. We shook hands at half court and then we went and shot and my, my partner and I won. So we were the national champions for NBA two ball in 1998, which was a glorious year for the Utah jazz. So I got to come back. They honored us at halftime of a Utah jazz game. I got to meet John Stockton, Carmelo, 
Brian Russell was my absolute favorite. So all those guys. So it it was it was great. So so from that point on, of course, basketball was was just it for me. Well, so that's I, I was going to ask you what was it that made you like basketball more than anything? It was it sounds like it was this event right here. That's what you're telling me. Yes. Yes, and I went to a Brian Russell basketball camp, and me and my friend were the only two girls <laughs> in the entire camp. And so he was really cute with us, really nice, and I fell in love with Brian Russell. And uh, that didn't hurt, you know. When you got a crush <laughs> on a basketball player, you're like, oh, I love basketball. No, I just love to compete. I loved being aggressive. Um, I worked well under pressure in sports, and so basketball, I just gravitated toward that for sure. Interesting. Uh, what was your feeling about the other sports that you played too i mean it was just like to keep yourself in shape or was it like i like these but just not as much as basketball no i love i love sports like i and i actually love dance i i loved uh just moving my body and doing something competitive and active and i would say softball was second for me i i really enjoyed it um tennis was okay which is really funny because i ended up playing tennis in college but I wasn't. I would say it was my worst sport, and I I didn't love it. I was okay. I'm too much of a head case for tennis. You have to have a real cool head, I feel like. And uh, so tennis tennis wasn't. It. I love track. So my senior year, I decided not to do softball for various reasons. And the track coach said, "Would you come run for me?" So I did the four by one and the one hundred, and I threw javelin. And we ended up taking second in state for four by one, and I took fourth in state for javelin my senior year. So. Wow. So we had a good time. You truly are the all-around athlete then, aren't you? <laughs> I don't know. No. I would say, uh, me and my my sisters and my family, we always talk about this. We just, we have a lot of grit. We have a lot of competitiveness. So what we lack in actual skill, I feel like we make up for in competitiveness, if that makes sense. So like, even if we're not that great, we will dive for every ball. Not anymore, Cleon, by the way. <laughs> I still play slow pitch softball. And I'm like, nope, I'm getting out of the way of that ball. <laughs> it changes when you have kids. But before, yeah, I, I mean, we would just dive for every ball. And, and so, like I said, what we lacked what we lacked in, in skill, we made up for in competitiveness. You grew up here in Utah County, and it would seem natural that you would gravitate towards BYU. What is your first memory of either attending or watching a BYU sporting event? Well, both of my parents grew up in Provo and went to BYU. So I, man, probably out of the womb. I don't, that, I, yeah, your, your, your question was my first memory. But I, I don't, I don't, that's hard because I just grew up watching BYU games. And, uh, but my very first memory attending a football game, I was little and, the, and they must have had a kid's day or something like that because I remember going and I'm sure it was an FCS school. <laughs> it was right in the middle of the day. It was like noon or one and. And I remember going to a football game and I just, I just absolutely loved it. And I fell in love with football and the football players. I liked boys a lot when I was a little clan. I did like older boys. It was kind of weird. Wow. But I, I, uh, I know, I know. Cause they let you go down and meet the players after. And, and I just remember being like, Oh my gosh. But I, uh, I, I just fell in love with football. And, but that was my very first memory of attending a BYU football game. And I was there with my mom and dad. As you played sports growing up, did you ever think, oh, I'm going to play for the Cougars one day? And the, the reason why I ask that is because I remember when I was young, you know, I, I'm not a tall guy. I'm only five foot nine. But I always used to say, I wish I was my stepdad's height because he was he was six four. And I'm like, man, if I was just six four, I'm sure I'd get a college scholarship or at least a community college scholarship, or I don't know, something like that. I mean, were you thinking, you know, if I play hard enough, I, I might be able to get a scholarship to play for BYU? <laughs> I, uh, no, not BYU specifically. I was one of those teenagers that I was like, I will not stay this close to home. Because I grew up in Pleasant Grove, and that's what, like 15, 20 minutes from Provo. So I, I never really dreamed of, of playing at BYU, but I, I dreamed of playing basketball in college. Absolutely. But I, uh, I ended up going to snow college and um, that just didn't happen uh, to play basketball there. But yeah, I, I never really dreamed of playing the Cougars. What's funny is I always loved them. Every school I went to, I watched them and I cheered for them, but I, it was just one of that kind of that, that angst, like I need to be away from my parents. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that's what initially kept me away from BYU, but as I got older and, and priorities changed and, and actually that I wanted to do broadcasting, that's when I, I figured that uh, that BYU was probably the best place for me. 
So why Snow College? What what was it about snow that you're like, yeah, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go down to Snow College, and I'm gonna you know spend a couple of years there and and do my thing down there. Why 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 gravitate towards snow? Because snow really isn't that far away, but it's also not that close to your home either. Right. Well, Cleon, it's one of those things. I really didn't have a choice. <laughs> no, I did. All six of my siblings. I'm the youngest. I'm the seventh. All six of them went to Snow College, and bless my parents' heart because they really should have bought a house. They would have saved so much money and made a lot of money in the long run if they knew all seven of us were going to go there. But I think my siblings just loved it. They loved Snow College, and I visited there a couple times, and I just loved it. It just felt like the natural thing, I think, because all my siblings went there, and it's a good transition out of high school. It's a really small college. They had a really good football program at the time. They were one of the top uh, junior college football program. So I loved the idea that people couldn't go anywhere. <laughs> like, like we would have dances and everyone would have to go to the dance because that's all you, there's all there was to do. You know, we go camping, we'd go, you know, mess around on people's ranches that live close by in Manti or something. And I just love, I've always kind of loved the small town feel and E from Utah is <laughs> you definitely get that feel. So it was, it was the perfect spot for me at the time to get my associate associate's degree. So you go down there and not only do you go down there to school, but you go down and you're on the tennis team. Is that correct? Well, yeah, I was actually just playing in a tennis class and there at Snow College, a lot of the coaches and stuff overlap. And I think the football coach was also the tennis coach and he, and they just have a club team. So he just saw me uh, messing around in, in tennis class and he asked if I'd join the team. So I was like, okay. So that's kind of how it came about. And it was very relaxed. It was nothing like what it is at BYU. (laughs) So it's not like you got recruited to go down to Snow College. to. It's not like they were on your door, like knocking on your door. Lauren, I know this is not your favorite sport, but we want you to come play (laughs) tennis sports or something like that. No, it absolutely was not that. No, it was, I got a small academic scholarship to go to Snow College. So that's one of the reasons also that I went down there, but no, I, I just was there to have fun. And I just, and that's one of the, the, the advice that my family had given me, like your freshman year, just, just go have a blast. Like, obviously you can't completely mess around when it comes to school or you'll fail out of college, <laughs> but just have so much fun. And so that's what I wanted to do. I didn't want any big stresses, but it, this club team was definitely not a stress. It, it just was, it was a blast. It was so fun. And of course, Cleon, I played every single um, intramural sport possible. So there you go. <laughs> Did you ever think about walking on or trying out for the basketball team? Because you said basketball was your first love, but you also said it didn't work out. Did you ever in the back of your mind think, oh, maybe I'll just go out, try for the team and you know, we'll see where things go. You know, I actually did. So the summer before I went to snow college. So, so I played in the all-star game my senior year and the snow college coach was there and I knew that's where I was going. So I think I just, I just reached out to her and, and asked if I could come try out. So they had me come one day and just kind of shoot around with the team. And then I never really heard back. So I, I don't know what happened. They probably were already, already full. Cause it was not something I, I, I pursued personally until that moment. And so it just didn't work out. I would have loved to play, but I just feel like wh- whatever happens is meant to be. And I honestly had the time of my life down there. So, so it was fun not to have that, that extra stress. So what was your freshman year like? I mean, you're a student, but you're also kind of on this club tennis team, too. I mean, yeah. how did you and you play intramural sports? I mean, how did you weave all those things into your life? Because I barely survived just sometimes playing intramural sports and then trying to go to class and working every once in a while. It wasn't really rigorous. <laughs> I took bowling with Bob. I took uh, oceanography. I remember that was my science that I took. I don't know. I just, when I look back at Snow College, I don't think of school, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. Like, I don't think of going to classes. I totally did. I got good grades, but it wasn't rigorous. I think of the social life. Like I said, it's the only thing there is there. There's really nothing surrounding to else to take your time up. So you can play intramural sports three times a week and play on the club tennis team and go to school and still have a phenomenal social life. <laughs> it's just because, I mean, 24 hours in the day, you can get a lot done, especially when you don't sleep as a freshman, you know? Like, <laughs> man, how did we do that? I, don't know. I, I really don't know. I, I did it well as an 18-year-old. As I kept getting older, I didn't do very well with that. So Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so you did you play club tennis both years you were at Snow? And, and 
what did it entail? I mean, did you travel around and, and play other teams, or was it just mainly playing each other there at Snow College? Uh, it was mainly just, uh, I think Dixie would come every once in a while, and we didn't play a lot of teams. Um, what is it, College of Eastern Utah or something? So we just kind of played these other small teams. But the one I remember the most is is a tournament. I think I took second place, and it was in Salt Lake City. The SU, this makes me sound, by the way, a lot better than I actually was. <laughs> I really wasn't that good. Very competitive, though. But SUU's tennis coach um, asked if I'd come try out there, which led me to go to SUU after Snow College. Were you thinking about going to Southern Utah when you left Snow College, or were you thinking, I'd rather go somewhere else? No, I, I was thinking about SUU. Again, another small town in Cedar City, and I had some siblings that went there and graduated from there. and. and Really loved it. In fact, I had a sister that was a phenomenal tennis player at SUU. I'm like, that seems like a great spot for me. So that's, and then, yeah, and then asking, being asked to play tennis definitely didn't hurt. So you are asked to be on the tennis team. Was it a tryout or was there a scholarship possibly involved? Was this a a walk-on thing that you were just like, yeah, let me go see if I can make it on the tennis team? Yeah, he asked me if I just come walk on. So I, I wasn't even that good. The girls were way better than me. I was almost like there to help them practice is what I felt like. I think I was like six singles or something like that. And, and uh, which every, every tournament you went to didn't even have six singles. So I only played every once in a while. What was really interesting is for some reason, I think, I think the coach liked me in almost like a managerial position because he offered me a scholarship for the next year, but, but I turned it down to, to go on a mission. So I would have, I would have done probably two years at SUU, um, had I not decided to go on a mission, but yeah, just one year of tennis at SUU and it was a blast and I loved it. And and really, honestly, I, I feel like I was just kind of there to help the girls that were really good in practice. Cause like I said, not that great, but I had that gritty competitive personality. I could get the ball back. So, so that's, that's how it was. And it was really fun, super windy in Cedar city, which made it hard to play tennis, but uh, we, we did it. We did it, and it was a blast. I looked up your athletic bio on Southern Utah's oh, website. Oh, great. No, no, no. I'm just going to say, <laughs> I, I'm not trying to be mean here, but there's not a lot of information. It's like your name. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That you're a sophomore, and that yes. was it. And I'm just like. No, like I said. Well, but did, were, did you actually compete, though? I mean, you said, well, I think I was there just to practice with the other girls, but did you actually play in tournaments? Did you did you actually I, get to play, and did they not put those stats on the website? <laughs> Well, that's rude, SUU. No, I I think I played in two, and probably lost. I was not I was not Division One college material for tennis. Like that was just it wasn't my thing. I didn't even I didn't even love it. I loved to play and kind of dink around, but it wasn't like my passion. So it wasn't something I put a lot of time into. And and those who play tennis know that you have to start like if you want to be really good, you have to start at a really young age. You have to put a lot of money into it. And then, and then you can be one of the best. And if you don't do that, you're just, you're going to be mediocre. That's just how it is, even if you're super athletic. And so I feel like that's kind of where I was at. I just, I, it wasn't, I didn't even start playing till I was in ninth grade. And um, it was just fun because it was a sport and I loved playing all sports. And so that's kind of how I got into it. But yeah. Yeah, that's, that's why there's no stats on me, but at least there's a picture. That makes me feel better. <laughs> well, I hate to break it to you, but there's not a picture either. Uh- <laughs> Sorry. Oh, darn. There used to be. I, I think it's they too took old it down. Now. It's been too long. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, she didn't do anything. Why is she up here? Was it easy to quit then playing competitive tennis? I mean, once you saw the level of competition that you were facing, was it just like, yeah, I think, I think I'm finally done. Oh yeah, absolutely. I loved playing in real sports better. <laughs> if I'm being honest. And it's, and it's probably because I was just getting worked by these girls and you, and I was putting in a lot of hard work and a lot of time in practice. You go into practice every single day. And so, and then not really playing. And that wasn't really my personality. And so, um, and I did it, I, I followed through, I did the, the entire season, but yeah, it was easy for me to walk away from it. it just, yeah, I, I, I didn't love not playing. I, like I said, I'd rather go play flag football and in real basketball <laughs> and have a great time. Uh, that's funny. When we come back, Lauren talks about why she ended up serving a mission for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and how that eventually led her to BYU. <music> Welcome. 
Welcome back to Behind the Mic. And my conversation today is with BYU Radio's Lauren McLean. Lauren was attending SUU and had a chance at a scholarship to help manage the women's tennis team, but she turned it down to serve a mission for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. You know what's funny is he is not a member of the church. He is one of the coolest guys, such a great guy. And when I, I turned down the scholarship, he was blown away. He was just like, what? Why would you do that? And I told him I was going on a mission. And and he said, I really hope your parents aren't forcing you to do this. <laughs> like, because he was like, why on earth would you turn down the scholarship to go to a foreign country and, you know, starve yourself? No, I'm just kidding. I definitely didn't starve <laughs> myself. I came back 20 pounds heavier. But um, yeah, he just didn't quite understand. But what happened that year at SUU was super cool. I had I hadn't, growing up in Utah, I hadn't been around a ton of people who weren't members of the church or spent a lot of time with them individually, if that makes sense. And my roommates at SUU, um, half of them were not members of the church and they ended up becoming some of my best friends. And I, I love them and, and they're such wonderful people. And it was kind of my first exposure to like, wow, you can be a really awesome human being and not be a member of the church. <laughs> but, um, that experience kind of, made me want, and I, I didn't have any plans of serving a mission, complete opposite actually, but, but that experience made me want to um, go find other people that were amazing and awesome that, that wanted to hear about the gospel and grow closer to Jesus Christ. And cause I feel like I did have some, some spiritual experiences with my roommates. And so by the time I had turned down the scholarship from the tennis coach, I was already set. My mind was just already set on going on a mission and it felt so good and so right to me at the time that I feel like that definitely made it easier. And then, and, and actually I was a broadcast major at SUU and I knew that BYU had a phenomenal broadcasting program. And so I had already um, applied for BYU and got in and deferred for my mission. So I was already, I was already on in the headspace of I was going on mission and I'm going to BYU. So it was, it was an easy decision to turn that down. Where did you serve your mission? I went to Chile. I was in the Concepcion South, mission in Chile, the, the second most Southern mission. Okay. What do you think your mission did for you? What did you learn while you were on your mission? Oh my gosh. So much. <laughs> so, so much. You, you learn, you can survive on your own. Number one, cause college, I wasn't that far. The farthest I was was about three and a half hours from home. And then to be in Chile, a foreign country where I had to fly down there by myself. And then you get in the airport and they're speaking Spanish and you're like, I have no idea what you're saying. What am I going to do? You know? And you just, you learn how to survive. And then not only that, you, you learn to love different cultures and different people. That's, that's something that I absolutely loved that there could be this, this country where they not believed so much differently than me. Most of them were Christian, but they um, just their traditions and their cultures and obviously their language. And I just embrace it. I just learned to love I uh, love those people. And it, it gave, kind of gave me a hunger to learn about different cultures in the world and to travel a little bit more. And then on top of that, I obviously had some incredible spiritual experiences um, with some of these people and, and got to witness just incredible growth in them and in myself when it came to the gospel and uh, how it can change you. You mentioned that you were already planning to transfer to BYU because of the BYU broadcasting program. I'm curious why you didn't want to stick it out at SUU. What I, I know that they have a good program, too, because I actually looked at going to Southern Utah before I came mm -hmm. to BYU myself, and it was really tempting to go down there. I, it was a, Like you said, it was a small campus. It looked really nice to go to, and I'd heard some successes of people who got out of the program there at Southern Utah and found good jobs. And so I was tempted to go there, but kind of like you, I was just like, well, I'm going to go to BYU because they've accepted me. Well, what was the reason why you're thinking, you know what, I think I'd rather go to BYU than stay down here at Southern Utah after my mission? Uh, honestly, coming full circle, I think it was the sports, the sports at BYU. I wanted to do sports broadcasting specifically, not just broadcasting in general. And at SUU, they had a great program and I had a lot of opportunities. And I did anchoring on their student program. They just, there wasn't as much of an opportunity to be involved in the athletics there. And BYU was just kind of the behemoth of Utah in my mind when it came to sports. Sorry, University of Utah. We always have to throw that in there too. Um, no, it just it just was, and I just that's where I wanted to be. And um, I just I just knew they had built the the broadcast building, 
and they were just doing some incredible things uh, with BOU Broadcasting. And it just felt, honestly, it just came down to it felt like the right place for me. And obviously, <laughs> for a reason, it worked out. Yeah, yeah. So you come up here, you go to school, you graduate from BYU and Broadcasting. Then what happens? Well, then, so yeah, I, I was in the, the student broadcast and they let me do sports, which was so awesome because that was kind of in high demand. So I felt really lucky that I got to be the, do the sports beat when I was in the student program. And um, I just loved it. I feel like I, I built up a decent resume. I got to go to the NCAA, um, oh my gosh, what was it? Not Sweet 16. It was when Jim or Fredette, they were in Denver and they played Gonzaga. I think it was, yeah, maybe the Sweet 16. Anyway, they, they let us travel there, me and a couple other people. And we were the only student reporters there. And I was like, this is the coolest thing in the world. Like we're here with people from ESPN and Fox and, and just all these beat writers. And then there's these students from BYU and we're just right in the mix of it. And, and it was so much fun. So when I graduated, I just I just knew that's what I wanted to do. And um, I, I actually had an offer, I think in Lubbock, Texas, not an offer. They wanted me to come down and interview and it just didn't feel right. So I actually worked a different job for about a year after I graduated um, doing computers and insurance and speaking Spanish, oddly enough. So it was like a Spanish insurance place until something opened up until something felt right to me. And then um, someone reached out to me about an assistant job to Michael Minor at BYU Broadcasting. He, he was in charge. He was the senior coordinating producer of BYU TV Sports and he needed an, an executive assistant. And I was like, boom, this is my, this is my way in. This is what I want to do. And so I interviewed for that and met with Michael and I got it. And the rest is kind of history from there. How did you go from being an assistant though, to yeah. being on the air for BYU television? You know, what's funny is, is Michael came from ESPN. He had just got there from ESPN as a producer for sports center. And when I got there, one of the first things he said was, I don't want you asking me if you can be on camera. And I said, okay, deal. You got it. And I meant it. I really did. I'm like, I will not ask. Cause he said, I really need an assistant. And I said, that's great. That's great with me. And I think it was about nine months down the road. Um, and I never mentioned anything. I never said anything. And I was loving it. I'm still having a blast. And, um, they were looking for a sideline reporter for women's soccer. And Michael said, if you are interested in doing this, you can do the tryout. And I was like, really? So I hadn't done anything on air for a long time. And he, we had this one soccer game where there was about, gosh, like six of us that had to do kind of a mock sideline reports and interviews and stuff. And, um, and I guess I did something right because they hired me to, well, not hired me. I was already working there. So they just, they just had me do women's soccer. So that's what started, started me, my journey in sideline reporting. It was the first, the first sport that I got to do. And I, I love women's soccer for that. And Jen Rockwood, they were just really kind to me. They worked with me a lot. I learned so much and I, I actually gained a love of soccer that I didn't have before that. So, yep, that was my first job. And shout out to Michael Miner, man, because he, he kind of got me everything that I have today. He was such an incredible boss and, and I just love the guy. So it was, it was awesome. So you, do that you start out and you have a nice career here as a sideline reporter and as a reporter and doing all these things what what was the best moment in your BYU TV broadcasting career up to this point you're like making me tear up because I'm like man that was like the best time in my life it was just I just felt so so blessed um gosh I don't know I got to be a part of so many incredible football games I love doing football I just I just Football is my favorite sport to watch and to cover. And so I felt so blessed to be able to be the sideline reporter for football for so long, to be there when uh, uh, Mitchell Jurgens caught the the Hail Mary against Boise State at home. And I interviewed him right after when Diane Gawoluku had the interception against USC uh, when it was Keaton Slovis was the one throwing it. And I interviewed Diane right after the game ended and Kalani and just those exciting moments, those big moments that I got to be a big part of. It's just kind of surreal, honestly, looking back as, as growing up a BYU fan and then being able to have the opportunity to to be and interview all these people and become friends with them. And, and I did a segment called Between the Lines for BYU Sports Nation where I got to see a bunch of these athletes and coaches in a different light. We did a lot of fun stuff and a lot of goofy stuff. We did vlogging with Juddy with Jeff Judkins, which is one of my favorite segments of all time because it was hilarious. 
So just, I, I couldn't even pinpoint one moment for you because it was honestly about nine years of a dream. It was, it was just so much fun. Uh, you left full-time yeah. work in 2019. What, what, what was the reason why? Um, well, I had a baby. I had my, my oldest son, Cash, and I tried to, to do the full-time thing for a few months. And I ended up, I just could not leave him. It was so hard for me. And I would bring him with me. And then obviously that didn't end up working out. So a few months into having cash, I decided it was, it was time to step away full time. And and at BYU, you can't just become a contractor immediately or part time. You have to take six months off for various reasons. So, so that was it. My, my baby, my oldest boy and, and zero regrets. It was, I I love it. And um, I love being a mom and, I just had this strong, strong bond and connection with him that it was really hard for me. Even to leave him with my sisters, you know, for a couple hours was so hard for me. So in my brain at the time, I said, man, I had such a good, good run at BOE Broadcasting. I had so much fun. I feel blessed. And now, and I, I got married a little later in life. I was 31, had, had cash at 33. And I just thought there's a time and season for everything. And it's, it's a time for me to be a mom now. Now you're a radio slash podcast host. Um, one of the shows that you <laughs> host and podcast is called Her Why. Can you tell us a little bit yes. more about that podcast? Well, Cleon, you're the one that came up with this idea, and I, I just absolutely <laughs> loved it. To toot your own horn, you're like, tell me about Her Why. No, <laughs> um, no, you, you, you did. It was such a great idea to do an all female podcast where we just focus on the female athletes and coaches um, of BYU sports because. They have had so much success over the years. And I feel like especially in recent years, they've just been phenomenal and and put a stamp on themselves nationally. And so football is king. That's just how it goes. Football is king. Men's basketball is not far behind. And so a lot of these women's sports um, just kind of get left in the dust a little bit. And I feel like um, BYU Sports Nation does a great job of covering them as much as we can. But it was a great idea just to have one podcast that was solely dedicated to the women of BYU sports and their, their journeys and their greatness and their competitiveness. And, um, it's just been, it's been awesome so far. We've, we've had so much fun and learned so much about these incredible women and I'm excited to keep it going. Her why is the new name of that podcast. It will hopefully return soon. Thanks to Laura McLean for joining us this week. And thanks for listening to behind the mic. We're taking next week off for independence day. Download and subscribe to Behind the Mic wherever you find podcasts or listen to all episodes on the BYU Radio app. Behind the Mic is a production of BYU Radio. 